Hello Targar friends, hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for an Orc Mode workout, so let's get through this intro very quickly because this is going to be a very long video. Volume was high. So please remember to click like down below, please click like on my other videos for the day, and you guys saw the Merc thing, you saw it. Okay, it's there, check it out, nothing else really needs to be said on it at this point. Uh, but today was dynamic effort squat and deadlift day uh today i just ran crazy band tension and instead of trying to do the fives i just did doubles with a lot of band tension how much is a lot i have 195 pounds on there now for some guys out there who are like well i mean how hard could that be who've never done heavy band tension okay you're looking at that you're looking at the weight on the bar because you know 52 pound bar right and you're probably thinking, yeah, it couldn't be too bad. I'll tell you right now, if you only squat 405, you're not you're not box squatting this. Put that in perspective. Bet you you can't do two reps out of this, let alone do it for speed. So it's it's tough. And anyone who's done really heavy bands, they they understand what I'm talking about. Anyone who's ever done heavy band work, I don't need to explain anything further to you. Um, this was really tough on my hips today, surprisingly. And yeah, I am struggling a little bit with getting everything set up. And as I've gotten with heavier band tension of dealing with my band pegs and, and making it work, uh, it hasn't been the easiest. I wish I had a different type of rack at this point. Uh, down the road, we'll, we'll get a different rack. Not that I don't love this particular road rack, but for what it is, it's like for what I'm doing, I could really realistically use a more open bottom, larger rack. It fully bolts down especially with the the open footing sections at the bottom to let me get a hair wider would be really really nice and without dealing with band pegs <laughs> the same way <laughs> but uh it was challenging but this isn't not has been as crazy as my others have been however hitting that this much band tension even with the doubles even with with eight doubles uh my hips my hips were just lit up and I know I need stronger hips. I know I need stronger hips on my squatting. And based upon that missed max, I need more hip. Um, and I need obviously more upper back. So we're gonna we're gonna address a lot of upper back today. A whole lot of upper back today. As I'm gonna do on my upper and lower days. And that's the beauty, you know, that's the beauty of a system like this. Because when we split things up, people tend to get dogmatic. And I've said before, that was always the problem with splits. Uh, with a system like this, we're not in those same situations. Because technically, it's a four-day upper-lower. But it's not. It really isn't. It's a squat and deadlift and bench. Now, doesn't mean it's purely powerlifting. Because I run my, my athletes and other things on this. I have MMA guys. I got a guy who plays baseball. Right, hey guys, who do other stuff. But even then, uh, I just got an endorsement a few minutes ago from one of my guys who competes drug tested in powerlifting, feeling like of how athletic he feels now that he can run and jump, and he wrote he used to feel like a cripple outside of the gym. Okay, but the whole thing here is that we can. Throw in weak point training for everything, right? If our upper back is a weakness on our squat and our bench, well, we can train our upper back every day. And we need to train it all four training sessions because if we have weak points, we need to train those weak points every training session if they're specific to that lift. And if upper back is limiting bench, well, we need to train upper back on bench day. If it's limiting our squat or deadlift, we need to train it on squat and deadlift day. Right, so we could end up doing it all four days. All right. So, you know, is what it is. A lot of people say, Jason, where's your quad work? Why are your quads so big? Well, this does build your quads, first of all. Secondly, my sled drags. Like I get more quad pump during my sled work than I do even doing isolateral leg work. Okay. Like the sled dragging 
And you see people who run cons, you get a lot of times the guys at West Side will say, oh, you got to drag sleds. And people are like, oh, you don't have to drag sleds. No. It, it adds another dynamic to your training. It adds a whole new dynamic. Um, it, it takes this training kind of to the next level. It does. It really does. Not only because of the, the phenomenal conditioning component, but the quad and the calf. I mean, my, my calves are probably going to grow. And my calves don't need to grow. I don't train my calves. That's genetic. But man, those sled drags. I get that calf and that quad pump and the hips. And I also feel hips tremendously on the glute ham race, interestingly enough. Uh, speed pulls. This is supposed to be 250, but I'm wondering if this 250, if my measurements are right, they were based upon sumo stuff. I'm pulling the weight a longer distance at the top. This does not feel like 250 because those lockouts, my grip, and trying to get that lock back is so hard. Because it, it shouldn't be that heavy. It's only what I've calculated at 250, so I probably need to remeasure these or just suck it up, buttercup. And, uh, and keep getting better at it. But man, that lockout, it just jerks me back down. As soon as I, as I get it near the top and it's I'm barely getting a lock, if that. And then it's just jerking me back down and then it almost jerks it out of my hands. Because it shouldn't be much over 500 pounds at the top. And I'm, I deadlift over six. You guys see me deadlift over six multiple times now, including deficit. Okay. Shouldn't be that bad. All right, because it's only 265 on the bar, plus 250 bands. That's only like 515. So I, I think my band tension might be a little more the last few inches than I think it is. But man, did that, that eccentric jerks you down. But people say, well, why do that? Because I have an upper back weakness. And man, that pull in that whole upper back, the T-spine, the traps, whoo, it hits it hits it hard it makes it actually really hard to do good mornings after makes it really really hard but got to be done it's got to be done and i mean i'd be faster but geez it's just so much band when i'm hitting that band you know but we don't do that many we only do like six of these if we're doing band work on speed pulls six singles okay six singles if you have appropriate band like if you're running 25 percent or more and especially if you're going to be aggressive like this in theory calculated at 250 when my max is like what 625 at least over the last deficit you're running a pretty high percentage uh good mornings i realized it's time to rotate to higher work higher rep work i can't pr anymore and I don't want to take this bar out. This bar is so good. My only option now is to, to change rep ranges. Okay. But I want to keep using this bar. Because I feel it's such a natural movement with this bar. And that's one reason I've been able to just stack weight. I've been able to stack weight like crazy when I really push the performance. And I mean, I was stacking weight with the other bar too. I mean, I was up to what? 275? Or work says, did I hit 300? I don't, I don't know. I might, I'd have to go check the footage. I know I was doing work sets with 275 with the straight bar before I got this bar. But I mean, this is 375 and I got 10 reps. They were hard. I don't know how I got those last two reps. Like, I felt like I was not going to get them. But I got, got them 375 for 10 after those speed pulls. It was hard. And I went to do another set, and I pulled it back, and I went to push my hips back, and my, my body's just like, nope, we're not doing this, so I racked it. All right, you see me walk it out, and I'm like, okay, well, let's just rep it. You see right there, it's just like, not my hips and everything, and my back's just like, no, we're not, we're not doing it, brother. Not today. You better rack that shit. So I did. See, I'm not Superman, guys. So I stripped it down to, what is this, 265? I know, right? People are going to freak when they see how many reps I do. It's, like, oh, it's only 265 now. People say, well, that's the math that looks like two plates. It's a 80, 85-pound bar. Check Titan's website. So 
It's 265. I managed to get 17 reps. You guys remember when my goal was to get 225 for 10? Right? 265 for 17 after hitting that 375 10 rep set. Uh, it's just time to just do some reps. I'm, I'm going to start repping these real high. We need to do a whole whole phase of really high rep work. Again, across the board though. Again, work capacity hypertrophy. People say, what about tension? I max out twice a week. Who cares? I'm getting the intramuscular coordination benefits of low rep work more so by maxing them by doing low rep work. We max out on upper and lower every single week. I'm good. Also, got to keep making gains while cutting. I need to use all these carbs, right? If I can keep burning through more uh, glycogen and carbohydrate, I can eat more carbs, get better nutrient partitioning, and keep slowly stripping down. Down to 221 now. People say, that's taking forever. Yeah, I told you guys it would. I didn't lie. It's like, People get upset at me when I tell them the truth. I said, we're going to take as long as it takes. At some point this year, we'll get down to from 230 to 215. 221 now. It's been like four months. Nine pounds, that's right. But I've hit PRs all through there. Which means we've probably gained lean tissue. So six more pounds, 215, and then we'll assess. I'll assess where I'm at, figure out, if I'm going to try to recomp there, stay roughly in that weight, lean bulk to 220 cut again, trim down a few more, right? I'll assess at 215. And that, that's been the plan. We're sticking to the plan. But I'm six pounds away now. Uh, it's obvious I'm getting leaner. Not like bodybuilder lean. We're not going to get bodybuilder lean. Of course, I already had one guy in the comments. Aren't you on trend? No, I'm not on trend. I don't like Tron. I won't use it. So there you have it. We saw the supplement video. Some people successfully called it. That's it. Okay, and I don't want to hear this crap from you guys. Well, wow, this hero of mine's natty. I don't care if he's drug tight. He's not natty. He wouldn't, wouldn't be in the industry making money. Now, uh, to get, now that we got that out of the way, we did these shoulder whip grip inverted rows. We did 5 by 15 today, which again, I need the grip work and the extra lat work, so we're not going ultra wide. Um, but we'll do five sets of these, all four main workouts. So give me 20 sets a week, that axle bar. That's a lot of lat work, grip work. And keeping in mind, we're training all the rear delts and side delts and all that. Those are getting a ton of work. Then I'm like, well, let me do some shrugs. And I didn't go super heavy. This went 205. I don't know if you can see the tens on the side. So let me just do like three sets of 15. My grip is going to be a little fatigued. My traps are fatigued. But let's get in and just do some work, right? Just get a nice good pinch. Work on getting those traps contracted. I'm good. I've got to get better at those deadlift lockouts when my grip is getting slippery like that. Um, some shrugs will help with that. There you guys can see I've clearly lost a little bit of body fat. Still have body fat and I still got loose skin and fat around the waist but I'm, I'm leaner and keep going right we just keep improving guys on everything we get stronger lose some fat gain some muscle we always got to be getting better at something right? we don't stagnate we don't stagnate I'm only 43 man I got plenty of prime years left just got to stay healthy Take care of my health and that's again let's come back over to that yeah you can't you can't stay healthy on that stuff okay you can't why well, a whole lot of your heroes who you guys look up to right now who are 28 30 see where they're at in another 10 years i plan on being here killing it All right. It's about the long game, guys. And we always improve. Always work on our weak points. We always have to rotate through and say, you know what? It's time to do a bunch of real high rep work again. Let's keep our tendons healthy, work capacity up. Just get in, keeps getting in shape. 
people say, can you make gains? Of course you can make gains on ultra high reps. There's plenty of data on it. Same thing here. I'm like, I don't want to mess with the chains. Let me just get some hamstring work in. Like, let me see if I can get sets of 20s on this. And this shows you guys how much harder it is with those chains. I actually had someone ask me, Jason, why are you taking weight off the bottom by using the chain? It's like, I'm, I'm not taking weight off the bottom. I didn't cut part of my body off. I'm adding weight to the heart, to the easiest part because the peak contraction is at the top and it's easier up there. Okay, it's easier. So today I decided let's just do some, some volume on this. Let's get some hamstring work in. And my God, it destroyed my hip flexors. Right, my abductors and my hamstrings, especially that lower hamstring insertion and then obviously the, the abductor, they were just crushed. Because I managed to get three sets of 20. And the first 15 were easy. I just felt like, yeah, these aren't even challenging. It didn't get hard. Like, I didn't feel like I was working till about rep 16. Okay. Then it got hard. But I managed to do just three by 20 on these after doing the good mornings and other stuff. And this is on a harder setting. Notice my, my knees are above the base of the pad. I can't really get to a much harder setting than this. It won't, I won't be able to fit in there. So, this is a relatively aggressive setting. Um, so I weigh 221, it's a lot of upper body to swing. So, uh, sets of 20 there. So again, kind of pointing out, my, my hamstrings are not weak, guys. See what I do with good mornings, reverse hypers, all that stuff. Then we go to the straight GHR on a, on a harder setting, three by 20, which is body weight. But that also again shows those chains make it a lot harder. They make it so much harder because when I take them away, even though you're thinking, well, they're mostly at the top and it's making the bottom, you're just like, yeah, but it's making the top hard, which is normally really easy. You almost get a break up there, which kind of sucks because that's where the muscles at peak contraction. And it's really where we could, we could get the most hamstring development on a movement that's so efficient so that's one reason to use the accommodating resistance. But today, it's just like, we'll get that stretch at the bottom. Because that doesn't necessarily, it doesn't really, I don't feel it deep in that belly up, up further up near the butt. I feel it closer to the knee, that whole lower section. Which again, that area is prone to tearing. So that's a good area to work. That's one reason this is a phenomenal injury prevention tool. But I feel it intensely through there. Um, and feel my again my hip flexors which I know I need more hip flexor hip flexors are going to help my squat that's that's really that in my upper back and we could argue about other muscles but they're all growing fine but yep they, these are tough tough today that's why I needed that little bit of a break to do in the shrugs and stuff <laughs> it gave me a breather it gave my hamstrings and lower body a break so I could do this and I needed it, but I mean, man, three by 20, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with that. I haven't done these with just my body weight in a little while. And three by 20, that's solid. I mean, that's some good work capacity for the hamstrings. And, and that's good, we need that to balance everything out too. Um, particularly because my work capacity is going up in the quad so much. And again, it comes down to the point of this all just builds muscle. Build muscle, the name of the game. Because we get the, the maximum strength off doing the max work. Then the speed work gives us explosiveness and the plyometrics. And it all fits together. The other stuff, we can use a lot of different rep ranges. We don't have to get caught up in that, oh, I need to just do heaven now. I don't even feel like I get that great of results on this system doing a bunch of fives for my, for my supplemental work. Right, I feel like my best gains and best PRs have been after phases of, of volume. So why not just do the volume? We're lifting heavy on max effort days. And then like I did last time, I supersetted these with, uh, just so that I have something to do between the break, between the reverse hypers and I would just flip the camera over. So I'm doing my axle bar curls. Uh, again, I need the bicep development and the bicep tendon to help with potential tears. Right, the axle bar adds another dynamic. Again, it works the, that forearm a little harder, works that insertion where the bicep inserts more. I need to make sure all that area is thick and strong. 
You know, I've had someone ask me, why don't you do wrist curls? Uh, same reasons that Louis Simmons and a lot of the coaches tell you not to. Because I'm not just trying to make my forearms big. I'm trying to increase grip strength and I'm trying to increase tendon strength in certain areas. Okay? Wrist curls make your hands grow. It can make when you're pulling on a deadlift bar, it can it can make your grip weaker to have too big a hands. Does that make sense? Uh, it just has to do with getting them around the bar correctly. And if you hypertrophy your hands too much, because it's going to happen. I mean, any grip training is going to cause some. But you don't want it to be excessive and in a way that doesn't increase grip. You don't want it to be counterproductive. So that's why I don't, I don't do wrist curls. And they don't even seem to really do much for your grip. Okay. So I need everything to, to have a grip component that carries over. There's my back. So again, everyone, people are impressed with my back. In real life, people are impressed with my back. Women are impressed with my back. It's kind of funny. I don't need to go there, though. But, sorry about that. I said I wouldn't discuss those sort of things. I apologize. But, again, supersetting these, um, this was all tough today. Like, I was, I was pretty tired by this point in the workout. This is a lot of work. It's a lot of volume. And by the time I got to this stuff, it's just like, man, these are just all tough. And I almost wanted to quit at three sets of each. Guys, I, I almost stopped. I almost just said, you know what? I'm done for the day. Right? After this set right here, I'm just like, oh, that's enough. I've done enough. And I'm like, no, no. This is Friday. It's the last hard training session. We, we, need to, we need to see it all the way through. Let's just dig in and do it and I don't feel bad after having done it like I I felt trashed at that point but now that I'm, I'm over here doing this stuff and voicing over like I feel good I feel fine I mean I feel fatigued I can tell I trained hard right I mean some of my tendons are a little little throbby um, but I don't feel like I've just been beat into the ground which is surprising you know and that's the interesting thing with some of the higher volume stuff when we just throw it in um, it, if you're careful with the exercises that you do it with, it just doesn't seem to destroy you the same way. And there you guys see, I'm not hiding anything. You can pretty much see what I look like. You can see the loose skin. But notice notice the midsection that in spite of having the, the, the skin there and the, the fat still adhering to it, I definitely lost body fat. I'm definitely losing body fat around my waistline. And I mean, at this point, anyone who's actually calling me fat is delusional you have a severe body image disorder at that point you should go seek help like unless you're just trolling and i get it, if you're just trolling you're trolling but if you actually mean it and believe it like you see me here and and in spite of knowing that there's some loose skin there when you factor that in if you actually think that i'm fat or at a non-athletic non-ideal health body fat range you need to seek medical help you have a very, very, very serious body image disorder and it's going to end up harming you. Okay, and, and so I'm not saying that to be mean. It's to the people who are trying to be, be a dick to me. I'm telling you that I'm concerned for your well-being. You, you need to seek professional help at that point. But great workout. Got a ton of work done. Uh, again, making progress. Testing my limits. So I hope it has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.